So for example, let's say that instead of making this, we were trying to make this. And let's say, how, how would we do this synthesis? Well, we would still say to ourselves that this is the alpha carbon. Now I guess I need to put in a new number, this new number seven number. And now we have a di-substituted acetone. We can think about these three carbons just like being acetone, and now it's di-substituted, this alkyl group and this alkyl group. Well, we could still do the same things as before. Um, we could still make the enolate and then do an SN2. And now how can we add the number seven carbon to this? same exact thing. What's going to be the effect of the sodium hydroxide uh, that's going to make this into an enolate? And then what type of mechanism will we have there? We'll get an SN2 then between this alpha carbon and this carbon chain. And that'll put the methyl group on. I mean, or is there is a limitation to that? Well, first of all, in this particular case, our assignment was to put on a methyl group. Correct. Yeah, but I mean, so if there, was, put a but if there was It could be a long chain. Oh. Yeah, it just has to be that the carbon you're attacking um, has to be primary or secondary, because we're trying to do an SN2. You couldn't attack, uh, you could not attach a tertiary carbon here, because that doesn't do an SN2. Um, so this is a good way to attach primaries and maybe secondaries. That make sense? Or not? For example, I don't think you could use this approach to attach this group mm -hmm. because that, then you have to add tert-butyl bromide and that can't do an SN2. Okay. So the carbon you're attaching shouldn't be more than secondary. Usually this is used for primaries though. So do you see now from here We've added the number seven to the alpha carbon. And then, now again, we can do the hydrolysis and the decarboxylation. And your instructor does that. It's a base catalyzed hydrolysis. And then acid. And that would take us to here. So, again, what we're learning to do is how to make substituted acetones, basically. Well, you start with this compound, acetoacetic ester. Uh, here's the alpha carbon that you're going to substitute. So it's really helpful to label this is what's going to be substituted. These are going to be blasted off, and these are going to stick around. Um, how do you add carbon chains to the alpha carbon? Well, you deprotonate this and then do an SN2. And then if you feel like it, you can deprotonate it a second time and do another SN2. And then, um, then in order to blast this off, you do hydrolysis and decarboxylation. These are still hard, so uh, we, we may end up wanting to work through this together, but why don't you take a minute or two to give this some thought and see whether how far you can get on your own, and then if necessary, we'll work through this together. 
let's try to use all the different kinds of labeling techniques that we've seen that have been helpful here. Can we just do uh, hydrolysis? Acid catalyzed hydrolysis? Put in some numbers. Always a good idea to put in numbers. Oh, I see. You have an extra carbon. There. That's right. Notice how thinking about the numbers kind of forces you to see that. Yeah, this isn't easy. So we can put in some numbers here. Let's call this the number three carbon then. Now the only carbon that I'm sure is the same in both pictures is the number three carbon over right. here. Now the reason why your first idea won't work is that if we just did a hydrolysis, that would turn this carbon into a carboxy carbon. But it wouldn't add this extra carbon over here. So that's our basic problem. We need to add an extra carbon over here. Now, if you think about it then, what we really need to do then is one way to think about this is, so we have something that kind of looks like this. Right? We have something that kind of looks like this. We got a 1,3 dicarbonyl. I don't know if technically, I guess this isn't as, not an acetoacetic ester synthesis anymore because there's not just two carbons here. That's the same basic idea. We got a 1,3 dicarbonyl. And what we need to do is form this bond, right? We need to add this chain to the number three. We don't need to worry about this over here. We know we can get rid of this whenever we want. You see, we can get rid of this ester group whenever we want because we can turn it into a carboxyl group and then decarboxylate. Mm -hmm. So this is basically the same idea that we had here. Um, so this is what we would label our alpha carbon. We should be able to add a carbon chain to this alpha carbon. So let's try to write down what carbon chain do we need to add to the alpha carbon. That's the hardest step right there. What do we need to include in the carbon chain that we're adding to the alpha carbon? Well, who do we want the alpha carbon to attack? We want it to be attached to the number one and the number two. Mm -hmm. Well, before we do anything, how can we make this into a nucleophile? The first step would be a base. We want to use a base as usual that matches our leaving group. All right, and now we can put in the carbon chain that this is going to attack. Well, isn't this the carbon chain that we wanted to attack? We want the alpha carbon to end up attached to this fragment here. Now, in the product, the number one is going to be attached to the number three. But it's not attached yet, so we have to have something else that the number one is attached to. Well, what can I put here? What can I attach to the number one carbon that would allow this enolate to attack the number one carbon? I'm sorry? We're trying to come up with some molecule for our synthesis that our enolate could attack. Um, so since this is a synthesis, we can make any starting material that we want. Well, in the product, the number one was going to be attached to the number three, but it's not attached to the number three yet, so we have to put something here that will allow the enolate to attack the number one carbon. What could we attach to the number one carbon that would allow the enolate to attack it? To Yeah, that's right. And what type of mechanism would happen then? SE2. In this particular case, they used chlorine, but other halogens would work too. 
Notice that this carboxy group over here is almost just a distraction because we're not trying to attack the number two carbon. We're trying to attack the number one carbon. So we kind of have to put this carboxy group out of our minds and focus on what we need to do with the number one carbon. That's where I think the squiggle is very handy. We need to form a bond between the three and the one, not the three and the two. So this is just a distraction. Although um, now we have to stop being distracted and pay attention to it. This reaction won't quite work um, because an enolate, we want the enolate to attack here, but the enolate might just deprotonate an acid. So this is not going to work as long as this is an acid. Instead, we should start with it as an ester. Then we don't need to worry about the enolate deprotonating the acid over here. So acids are tricky to work with because they tend to just deprotonate and mess things up. So instead, let's work with an ester here. So, uh, so now we do have to pay attention to this. 